All right, lawmakers fighting back as the Army now considers paying Bo Bergdahl $300,000 in back pay. 100 members of Congress now pleading to not give any money to the disgraced Army sergeant, but instead to the families of those who were injured while searching for him. Here with us now is the man leading this effort and an Army veteran himself, Arkansas Congressman Rick Crawford. Thanks for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Why did you decide to spearhead this? <laughs> Well, look, you know, looking at the calculation of the servicemen's group life insurance benefit, a death benefit is $150,000 to the families. How many uh, soldiers died in search of this man who is an acknowledged deserter? He admitted it himself. He, he pleaded guilty to desertion and misbehavior before the enemy. That doesn't warrant a reward of $300,000. I understand that they typically calculate uh, benefits for people who are POWs. There's a, a, a per diem, believe it or not, for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and in a case where you're actually a POW, I can see that's warranted. But in this case, we're talking about a deserter, and I don't think he warrants any extra pay at all. Yeah, he, well, he kind of he set himself up for this. I can't imagine that he thinks he deserves it either. Uh, let's, let's look at this uh, letter here from members of Congress to the Army. It says, as members of Congress committed to our servicemen, service women, and veterans, we understand the incredible sacrifice that is required of those in uniform. With that said, it is our firm belief Private Bergdahl should not be awarded back pay. Now, he was convicted of these... Uh, war crimes, uh, misbehavior before the enemy, desertion. Uh, I can't imagine that you think or anybody thinks he's really going to get this money, do you? Well, look, they're reviewing that. And uh, right now, I believe it's in the hands of uh, Forces Command, uh, Commanding General Robert Abrams. I think he'll have the opportunity not only to review uh, the verdict of the, of the court, which was a bench trial as opposed to a jury trial. And, and I could get into, into that, but I, I guess maybe we'll save that for another time. But the point is, this still has to be reviewed by General Abrams, and then they'll make a determination as to whether or not he's entitled to any benefits. Also, keep in mind that they're even considering him for a POW medal. Uh, so, again, we've got, got a lot of problems here, and, and this seems to be systemic throughout the Department of Defense, and I don't want to malign the, the military, but this Department of Defense and this Army in particular does not resemble the Army that I served in. What message do you think this sends to other servicemen and women that he could potentially be receiving all of this money? Well, look, you know, I, I just wrote a, a piece on a blog uh, on Veterans Day that underscored the, you know, the, the social contract that we have with our veterans. But our military has a social contract as well. And most men and women who serve in the military honor that contract in good faith. This is an individual who broke that contract mm. and uh, he left his brothers and sisters in arms and uh, he, he broke with the chain of command. He broke faith with his, uh, his brothers in arms. And there's no honor in that at all. Sir, you just said something that I, I thought was interesting. I, I have a deep respect for the U.S. military. And you just said that this is not the same uh, Department of Defense uh, that you worked under. Um, do you think it's spinning back in the right direction, though, under Mattis's leadership? And would he be able to come in and make any kind of impact on a case like this? Could he slide in and say, there's no way you're going to give this guy $300,000? Because he seems to be a lot more pragmatic about the needs of the military. He absolutely could. He certainly has the authority to. And obviously, that, this has to be followed through the chain of command. And I believe, as I said before, Forces Command, Commanding General Robert Abrams, I believe, is the next step in uh, upholding that verdict. Uh, that was that was rendered in the court martial, um, but look, I, I mean, look, I, I'm a military brat. My dad served in the military for 24 years. I served myself, and I'm very well acquainted with the way the military works. And it just seems over the last, uh, particularly the last eight plus years, um, there's been a, a, a lens of political correctness through which every every issue has been viewed. And this is uh, this is no exception. In fact, this is maybe one of the most egregious examples of that. Congressman Crawford, thank you for joining us this morning. And thank you for your service, sir. We do appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate that.